one is born, one is absolutely helpless. One is totally innocent also. And the safety that was experienced, the security that was experienced while within the mother is last. The cord is snapped, the security is last. So the life starts for a human child with absolute helplessness. And a living organism with an instinct to survive will die of sheer fright. In this state of helplessness, if there is nothing to compensate, what compensates for this helplessness is the child's innocent trust in the person who picks up the child. The child can't afford to doubt the capacity of the person. And therefore, it has to trust absolutely. If you really understand what is absolute trust, it is nothing but infallibility, an awareness of infallibility in the person trusted. The trusted person is infallible. Infallible means knowledge wise no wanting, power wise no wanting, caring wise no wanting, loving wise no wanting, compassion wise no wanting, resource wise no wanting, skill wise no wanting, that is infall infallibility. So the child without without understanding all this, innocently, trusts absolutely, which amounts to accepting the person who picks up the child, nurses the child as infallible. Therefore, the real mother or the one who cares for this child, nurses the child, a foster mother, if not biological one, is the most trusted person, because it can't afford to distrust. It can't look around, recruit your mother. <laughs> Therefore, this infallible person has to be consistent. There is no consistency in any human being given to moods 
given to illness, given to varieties of limitations. No person can be consistent, however caring, loving the person is. A mother cannot be available all the time of the day and night. And therefore, the child is going to pick up panic in its, in its, in its growth while it is growing. Here, the good Lord about whom we will understand much more has provided a capacity for the child. Whenever it picks up panic, fear to cover it up because it can't handle pain. This in our culture, spiritual culture, is called Kashaya. In modern psychology, this covered up pain is what is called unconscious. And therefore, no human being is without this unconscious. This unconscious consists of lot of confusion and pain. As the child grows, it comes to discover that the person who cares, the mother, is not consistent. And especially these days, <laughs> when schooling starts in two and a half years and three years, for what I don't really know, The whole unconscious is up to four and a half years, four years and four and a half years, within five years. Why should any child be sent to a school? Why should it not be with the mother? Somehow these days, there is a feeling that my child will lose out if it is not sent to school in two and a half years and three years pre-KG, when the child doesn't weigh a kg. What for, I do not know. They say it learns social skills as though social skills are a thing that one cannot learn. Any grown-up person can learn any social skills of any kind of culture. <laughs> you can behave exactly like a person <laughs> in Africa, in Africa. You don't require to, you don't re require to learn your social skills when you are two and a half and three year old. Innocently not even understanding what is being done to the child you love so much and care for so much. 
the child would think that I am no good, that is why I am sent away. In order to win the mother, and therefore what it will do, it will come back and present itself as though it is happy. <laughs> more it is happy looking, more there is unconscious build up. Not only the child is innocent, this mother also is equally innocent. <laughs> Uneducated, illiterate psychologically. For everything there is, there is, there is what we say training. To become a telephone operator there is training. <laughs> But to become a mother, a simple few things have to be understood, even they are not understood. We did not have this problem because we did not have this kind of schooling anyway. <coughs> Till recently it was just a few years ago, I mean perhaps 50 years ago, it was the same, the child was sent to uh, yeah, the school when it was five. This is all new nonsense. Therefore, what we have done in Madras, we, in Chennai, we have started a school just to create awareness in the minds of people. A school, if I say don't send the child to a school, nobody is going to listen to me. And therefore, I started a school, Arshavidya Mandir, and there the child goes with the mother, otherwise child has no admission. The mother has to go along with the child. You can go prenatally also. <laughs> the mother will have to sit in a class separately. The child has its own class, whatever plaything, whatever that child, that is all properly so followed, this modern syllabus is properly followed. <laughs> so that you will not think that your child is missing out, no child will miss out according to me. Any child misses is only mother, <laughs> anything it misses is mother. Consistency is availability, please. The non-availability is inconsistency. Presence and appearance, <laughs> inconsistency. Father present, is present and is absent. At least one parent is consistently available, even that is gone. <laughs> And therefore, here the child gets whatever education it has to get, it gets, and mother also gets educated in our culture. There is a class for them. They also learn how to care for the child, how to bring up the child culturally. Cultural uprooting is also a great, great himsa done to a child. A human being culturally uprooted, well it cannot, that human being cannot be sane, I tell you, the core person is destroyed. I consider that as a great himsa done to the child. Child or a grown up even. And therefore, the mothers also learn and the child also learns. The greatest heritage legacy you can give to a child is that no matter how old you are, you are still learning. The child learns, my mom also learns, it is you are opening the child to an understanding, quite understanding 
by example you teach the child, that you care for the child. Do you know what does the child do? In this classroom, it just sits there for few minutes and afterwards wants to find out whether mom is there or not, walks with its short steps, reaches the other room and looks at looks at the class, finds out whether mom is there or not, and there, smile, come back. <laughs> or it goes and sits on the lap for two minutes and comes back. <laughs> that is denied to the child. In the awareness of the child, the presence of the protecting mother is always there. The sense of security is never lost, never lost. It's wonderful. This is what learning is. Still, the child will have unconscious. This is normal growth I am talking. When the child is always consistently with the mother, there is a normal growth and there are normal problems. When it is not available, that presence of the child, mother, is not in the awareness of the child there will be abnormal problems. These are modern problems of self-loath, self-esteem problems, which our grandmothers don't even understand what we are talking about. No relationship is stable, all because of self-loath, self-doubt and therefore whether the other person really cares for me or not is to be checked up in the morning, in the evening, at noon also. Constant doubt, <laughs> self-doubt. all because of this neurosis created by modern schooling, modern parentage. We need to understand this. Start your school with ten children. Ask ten other, the nine other mothers to come in your own house, in a veranda start, if I have a compound, start a school. That is the greatest thing that you can do to your child and also to the children around. It's a different thing. Now coming back to the topic. I start with helplessness, compensated by my, my trust, total trust in the, in the mother and later in the father. I find my mother is subject to limitation. When I become three, it is a greatest the greatest humiliating, humbling, so the discovery is that a mother has her own ego, her own limitations, father has his own limitations and therefore it is the greatest humbling experience from which human being never gets up. Because father is fallible. There is a cockroach and the child 
or runs to mother. <laughs> because mother is almighty, she will take care of it. With the mother, the child can come, bold enough to come to the place where it saw the insect. Now the mother screams and asking for the dad to come. Dad comes and phones for the firefighter. <laughs> we understand the child, what will happen to the child, looks up, the mother looks up and then inside something happens. You know what? My mother is fallible. Without words, trust is eroded. <laughs> it's a violation of trust. <laughs> Not deliberately done, like sending the school to the KG class, but it is by being what you are, you are doing it, your child. <laughs> Father falls ill, gets a heart attack. He gets a heart attack, that's enough to unsettle the child's trust. All our trust is violated all the time. By the time we finish four, four and a half, we come out <laughs> searching for the infallible. <laughs> this is the reason why Anybody who says, I will save you, <laughs> becomes a savior. We develop a savior psychology. Everyone wants a savior, wants to be saved. In all this, there is a search for the infallible father, the infallible mother. That is why Ishwara should be viewed not as father, but also as mother. Not only as father, but also as mother. And father and mother in our culture, spiritual culture, Ishwara is both father and mother. Therefore, a Kalidasa was a literary person and he he prays to the Lord as Jagatav Pitaro Vande Parvati Parameshwaro. I pray to the Lord who is the father of this entire world, who is the mother of this entire world, unto them, the parents, I salute. One. In fact, we have a form in which the half is male, the other half is female, Ardhanari Shuraha. And there we invoke the Lord as both father and mother. Even that is not shown, but even then it is like that alone, father and mother. That's why all our gods are happily married, because they are both father and mother. We need your father and mother who, who are infallible. We will look at this infallibility thoroughly and, and so that it makes a difference in my life, in your life and when we come back we will see that. Thank you.